I want to introduce our second speaker of today, um, Sobek Kekker. He is a research scientist at Orion Space Solution. We are interested to learn uh, space science at private sector, and we are eager to learn your career path. So welcome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sobit Kharkap. Uh, I work at uh, Orani Space Solutions. First of all, I would like to thank um, Seminar Organizing Committee for inviting me to express my like uh, career journey. So my title is an Odyssey, a journey from Himalayan tectonics to exotic education. So I'm from uh, Asia. I'm from Nepal. Uh, I put some picture from Nepal. It is a workplace of Buddha, the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. And if you have heard like the Gurkhas, the uh, brave soldier, if you have heard uh, some of this term, I think you might know, uh, heard the name Nepal. Have you heard name Nepal? <laughs> okay. So from Nepal to USA, so uh, I'm going to tell about uh, my story, how I end up here in Colorado, finally. This is my agenda, uh, origin of Soviet from Nepal. And Nepal to the people say like land of opportunity. So the, the country, USA, I would say it is not a country, it is like a continent, you have a lot of opportunity, not in small peripheral area. An affiliated institution uh, in USA uh, and current research and what matters the most. And from, from after current research, I would like to change my uh, the theme of talk and uh, talk a little bit about what matters the most and tips and takeaway and we'll go for interaction. So this is a monkey temple from uh, Kathmandu Valley, that is capital city of Nepal, and to the iconic picture for that represent USA, Statue of Liberty. So let's see Nepal. What is Nepal? <laughs> so now we are in Western Hemisphere. I'm from Eastern Hemisphere. See, very tiny country. It's like a, uh, it is sandwiched between two giant nations. With shape as well as population like China and India, highest population in the world, right? And in, in between this giant country, there is a small, but I would say with a diversity is it a large country in the Asia, Asia, South Asia. So this is Nepal. So from Nepal, I got opportunity to uh, extend my horizon for the education. And I traveled to USA in 2008 for the master's program. So you know where is Nepal <laughs> from there to uh, from Eastern Hemisphere to Western Hemisphere. It is uh, around, uh, about 12 hour phase difference. The time is exact 12 hour difference. So here now 11 uh, a.m. They are 11 p.m. So I, I would uh, like to say something about Nepal. The uh, tectonic or like geographic is uh, almost similar to Colorado. So. We are in Colorado. I would like to compare Nepal and some of uh, about Colorado. Both are mountainous region, the tallest mountain. And the tallest mountain in Colorado is almost half the size of the mountain, tallest mountain in Nepal. So around 8,000 plus meter, uh, 29,000 meter uh, uh, feet tall. And uh, half of this almost in Colorado geography. So if people travel to uh, Colorado, they say like it is almost similar to Nepal. 
the geography. So you see, so tiny nation, like almost two times. Colorado is uh, almost two times larger than Nepal, almost two times. But, but population is almost five times greater than here. So I, I belong to eastern part of eastern, south eastern part of Nepal. So around 85% uh, of geography is hill or mountain in Nepal, and uh, only 15 uh, to 17% is plain on the uh, southern side in the uh, Indian border. So I'm from plain region. It is called Tarai there in the uh, eastern, uh, south eastern part of Nepal. But I compare with other state, it is almost similar to the size of Iowa. <laughs> exact size is, here's the two times. So first, when I came to USA, I joined in MS program in physics. Even though I completed MS program in Nepal, I taught few years there in university colleges. And I started MS program in Western Illinois University, uh, Macomb, Illinois, the west, the uh, western, west, west, south part of Illinois. Different environment from US, uh, from Nepal to uh, USA. We here uh, they use a right lane. We use a left lane. So most of the time, if I walk in the stair, I used to block other way. <laughs> so it is just opposite for us. So cults are also different. We shake a hand, we hug, uh, same gender. Weird here, people think, oh my goodness. So uh, first, uh, and when boys and girls stay together, no, nobody cares here. But in our country, if boys and girls stay, sit together, but they, they will see like this. But here, just opposite. If same gender uh, spend most of time and they think like, like this. So this is totally different for me, like totally different culture. For my elder people, we never call with them uh, with their name, like dad or uncle, they, this type of relation we have to, we used to use. But here, even in professor, we call with a name. So it was something different for me. Um, uh, I feel uncomfortable in the beginning. So when I completed my master's program there and I got PhD opportunity at Boston College, Massachusetts. So Boston, Boston is uh, like Massachusetts in the, um, the plate of, in the car plate, they used to write like Spirit of America. So it is educational hub, very nice city. Within uh, 10 to uh, within 10 to 15 mile radius, you can find um, world famous university, Boston, uh, in the uh, like Harvard University, MIT, Taft, um, Westchester, uh, uh, Northeastern University, Boston College, Boston University, Brandeis. These all are within uh, less than like. Uh, under like 50 ranking in the world. So very uh, educational environment there. Everywhere you can find um, uh, a student and you feel like your own country. Because in somewhere you can see your, uh, people from your country in some point or grocery or somewhere like. So even you are international student and you feel like your own country there because of diverse population uh, and mainly due to most of the Eastern are from outside the US, that makes a different type of environment there. I enjoy there in Boston, in the physics department in Boston College. In Boston, uh, Boston College, uh, it's a small physics uh, department, around 10 to 12 students enroll every year. So if we count like five years for PhD program, um, almost uh, 50 to 60 students, uh, uh, graduate students for physics, mainly focusing on material science. I started my degree in material sciences, uh, condensed matter physics, very nice environment there, friendly environment, 
to attend to attend uh, student every year. So everybody everybody knows each other. And I I surprised like uh, because the research facility also very good. It is well funded like private university. Um, and when I join uh, in the colloquium, same every every week seminar, uh, every biweekly colloquium. In colloquium, a few years I like uh, every semester at least one or two Nobel laureates gives presentation there. So it is something amazing. I like that environment. Sometimes two or three, like I saw a lot of Nobel laureate there, not only physics department, in there is other like social uh, sciences also, there are a lot of like visitor, like I saw like, uh, um, I uh, attended like conference, like a seminar from like Ban Ki-moon. I attended Julia, Julia, Julia uh, Gillard from uh, President, uh, uh, Prime Minister of Australia, sorry, yeah, Australia, and uh, Nobel laureate from Colombia, uh, and a lot of Nobel laureate in uh, uh, like literature also, not only science. So very nice environment. I enjoy there. But but uh, there are some uh, issues in the department. There is a, like not related to a student, but uh, with uh, like faculty members, like physics department head and faculty. Some some are uh, some have like a lot of fundings. They they want to extend their lab and and authority may not provide enough space. And there is like uh, the the uh, professor who have a lot of student, they want to like extend lab, but if they don't get the space and they want to move other. And due to, the, I was in that transition phase. So there was a complication, uh, three, four uh, teacher move in other universities who have a lot of funding. So due to that, it is, there are a lot of restrictions for international students like me. I hope uh, most of the students, uh, you are also from uh, outside US uh, uh, with a F1 visa status. So you have to renew in a certain period of time. And um, the, the, going, the things were going like in the right way, but there was complication. I was, uh, uh, I had also three, four publications I uh, I involved in uh, uh, material science, uh, uh, focusing research. About to graduate, uh, uh, one or two years, but but uh, there due to that um, conflict, and so we have to find options. Like we have to choose, we have limited option. But uh, from material science, like I was looking at like crystal structure, atomic level like a uh, neutral scattering technique. So now like uh, there are a lot of research going on on the like how to replace a uh, semi semiconductor, sprintonics, this type of things. I was working on that. So I need to take a transition due to, due to limited uh, option for me for, as a graduate student and international student. I would emphasize on that. So there was a transition from material science to space physics. So I, I was like, I would say like forced to change the field. So uh, I was using a microscope to see the crystal level, atomic level, X-ray scattering techniques, X-ray diffraction. So now from lab to, I have to see up, like upper atmosphere, space environment. So a terrestrial, atmospheric, ionospheric, thermospheric, and uh, uh, mesospheric processes, space physics and aeronomy. So from material science to, I have to see, the, uh, there are a few terminology I didn't know before, like I was uh, calculating resistivity, resistance, um, uh, successibility, um, density of atomic level now, I have to choose different type of parameters to explain the environment, like TEC that I never heard. 
total electron content, electron density are similar. A magnetic field, electric field, these are basic things for a science student. So uh, there are a lot of processes in uh, Earth environment, uh, like high, high latitude, uh, low latitude, like in low latitude process, like equatorial aeronomy, the solar driven type, atmospheric irregularities, plasma bubbles, equatorial electrojet, this type of thing. So uh, my project is defined in like uh, ionospheric science in the low latitude. I focus in low latitude region. There are different processes. So I choose the processes that occurs in the low latitude around uh, 30 to uh, 35, 40 degree uh, either side of uh, geomagnetic or uh, equator region. So mainly I've, the focus of the study is from like proving that uh, uh, phenomena with ground-based observation. So ground-based observation of equatorial aeronomy, equatorial ionosphere. So that is my project that, that I started. So I have a background from uh, material sciences. So I have to take some courses because Boston College College uh, didn't have like a space physics course. So I moved Boston University for the course, like basic uh, uh, space physics course. So even I was a student at Boston College, I took some few courses in Boston University related to uh, space physics and aeronomy. And I look for different opportunity that uh, extend my horizon. I would focus horizon in that field. So there are like some summary school workshop, a seminar or like conferences. So not only courses that also help a lot. So, so focusing on the uh, low latitude region, like equatorial electrojet, uh, that is like intense band of current going in the eastward direction around the roughly around three degree either side of geomagnetic equator in ionospheric air. E region that is called equatorial electrojet. You can see this pattern is moving along magnetic equator, not geographic equator. So magnetic equator, this, this is geographic equator and this pattern is moving in uh, magnetic equator. This is geographic. So if you if you see almost the magnetic and geographic equator almost in same line here, but here unique type of shape is seen in the uh, American sector. Unique type of structure. So this this is uh, geographic. So almost similar in like uh, this is Indonesian region. And if you come here, like almost similar parallel. And in but if you come in here, so unique shape of geomagnetic equator in in South America. So in uh, eastern part, western part, the eastern part of the magnetic equator is shifting every year. But uh, since uh, like more than 50 years, the uh, western part of magnetic equatorial region is almost in the same place in here, this, this point. So it is in Peru. There is a big radar in Hikamarca, Hikamarca radar. So I got an opportunity for like uh, uh, to uh, work there also, and this is like I already said, like this is a uh, equatorial electrojet. So it is due to like dynamo action of uh, in uh, two hemisphere that makes intense current flowing in the uh, system in the equatorial region, eastward direction, and there is magnetic field. So if you put electron in electric field, it follows the path of electron. Uh, electric field, direction of electric field. If you put electron in the magnetic field alone, it try to make circular. But if you put electrons or like charged particles in perpendicular of that field and it gets like uh, the direction of propagation perpendicular to both fields. So in equator, that makes like uplifting of plasma from equator. And after a certain point, and it, it start to move along the 
when it becomes free and it starts to move along the magnetic field line and, and makes two high density region that is called equatorial ionization anomaly to either side of geomagnetic equator. So one can think like if solar heating on the earth surface, there is a higher density in the air equator, but it actually there is a higher density in either side of equator due to special geometry of ele electric and magnetic field. Very cool property, right? This is called equatorial ionization anomaly. So this is highest around noon time. This is highest around uh, 3 p.m. local time. Similarly, after sunset, the ionosphere moves up upward direction. So, so higher density top side and bottom side low density, uh, low, de low density plasma, and that makes one type of bubble structure. Ions going up, the bubble structure moves through the ionosphere and makes bubbles. So these are the main three phenomena that occurs in elect equatorial ionosphere, and I enjoy it. Very cool properties. I started to work on this type of phenomenon. So. Equatorial electrozyte, equatorial ionization anomaly, and equatorial plasma bubbles. So I got an opportunity in ZREP Scholar Internship Program in Peruvian uh, Rattle, this Hikamarka Rattle, big rattle. So, so I uh, got some ideas how different instrument works. And uh, this is from uh, my PhD advisor, like this is Cesar Bhayadare, and he has his own network of GPS. He provided this, and during this Tonga volcano uh, eruption time, like 2022, January 15, this type of uh, PC distribution is seen in the uh, American sector. So, this was what I did in my PhD. And after PhD, I got uh, an opportunity of postdoc uh, in the Center for Solar Test Research uh, in NGIT. So uh, as I said, like there is two hump structure and the people are looking at uh, why these are, uh, uh, in which case these two hump structure, high density, electron density structure become like asymmetric or symmetric. And that mainly uh, due to like one of the main parameter is wind structure. Uh, we have to know about the wind structure. And the NGIT team uh, designed one special instrument. It's called soft second generation of image prepared Doppler imager, and that measures a wind structure, uh, 24 hour wind. Previously, only people used to get a wind value in the nighttime, but it get, provides uh, 24 hours. So I was hired there. I had there and I worked there. And after that, after uh, postdoc, I got a research scientist position in Oran Space Solution, which is not uh, very far from here. Uh, it is a company. So it is a mainly manufacturer company of like um, satellite, small sat. Uh, most of the employees are engineers there. So uh, around 15 to 20% employee uh, work in the uh, research area. Other are like they build satellite and their customers are like NASA, FRL, Space Force. So they work for them. But so uh, it was uh, previously Orion, uh, uh, when I joined Orion, I didn't know that name before. Uh, previously, it was known as Astra uh, and established in 2005 in Austin and they moved Colorado in, uh, then uh, in 2020, they changed their name from Astra to Orion and from November of 2023, um, the Orion Space Solution is acquired by uh, an arc field company. So it is a part of arc field company. So, the, so it, it is also, I can say like a transition academia to the company. 
one type of company but it is like uh, for me it is not a like a big uh, like a giant uh, a transition actually it is like a pseudo or like uh, uh, quasi tra transition because almost uh, same i'm doing research i don't have engineering background to build an instrument or something like that uh, i also extend similar type of research here i can work similar type of work there so uh, now i'm here working uh, in the similar type of what, what i work now here in the orani space a similar thing i i used to study equatorial aeronomy and from the ground based instrument here i used to i'm uh, usually working on different similar type of phenomena from space like satellite using satellite uh, data and some different type of models and how the different layer are altered from the bottom side perturbation the right figure showing that different type of perturbation occurs in the topospheric or below the MLT region and that uh, propagates upward direction. So almost similar, uh, not big transition, but it is company. Uh, there are some uh, different environment also. I, I'll explain that about uh, whatever transition uh, should uh, we have to go through for that. Uh, so almost similar type of environment, but the probing technique are different. Like I used to use ground-based data sources, now space-based data source in the company. Okay, so uh, so what matters the most? So from uh, in like uh, from transition, like I have. Uh, here I would say like material science to space physics and academia to uh, company like transition, uh, one type of transitions in both cases. So here like uh, uh, you have to choose you know, what helps to transit from one field to other field, one environment to other environment. So I gonna tell something about it like sometime that transition gonna be the giant leap, like totally different also. So academia to uh, company, if you transit like the goal and objectives will be different. Like they mainly work for the knowledge in the uh, uh, academia and the main objective of company is to uh, give some product and sell and get um, benefit from that. So the freedom uh, and structure, I would say like there are a lot of freedom in academia. You can, you can have like a lot of, you can wear different hat, like um, you can teach also, you can only focus on the research also, uh, different type of, uh, in different activities you can involve. But a company is more structured. So you are confined within like they, they are, they count every minutes. In my, my case, every six minutes. We, we have to uh, enter our time sheet in every six minute uh, increment. So the totally uh, somehow different, but uh, an scope of duty, like uh, 40 hours done, but, um, but you have to work on their own assigned project. And credits, uh, in, uh, if you publish or if you discover something and uh, in academia, if you are in academia, everything is uh, credit goes to the researcher. If you publish something, you, even you get funding from other agency and the credit goes to you yourself. But in company, it is like share, like first company and what they want, like they are, that they, they're gonna give credit to first company and the team, and you have to share the country, the uh, credits or attribution and work environment. So different like, um, so in my case, like in work environment uh, in the academia, you can work in like, uh, I would say this is academia, like uh, this is a research center, right? Research center and like university. But uh, in, uh, in the case of a company, it, it may be like private or even these are private. If they get like 
government, uh, their clients or their customer are a government agency, and you have to follow the rules for the government, uh, uh, like a government employee. You have to uh, go through the, all the processes like uh, during that period. Like uh, I'm, I'm not a citizen, so even um, in a company, I'm not allowed to go in all rooms. They make satellite. I'm not allowed to go in, inside there. How, how they are making it, I don't know. So because these are like um, NASA, AFRL, Space Force, these are defense-related agencies. So they make they work for them. So I'm I'm not a citizen, so there are some restriction. So only a certain project uh, I involve in certain project that are uh, they allow me to work. So not all projects. And risks and stability. Uh, in the tenure track, uh, if you go in academia, there are less risks, but uh, in more stable. Even you have to compete there. But in company, um, some people say more stable, some not. So it depends because the rule and regulations changes every minute. Because why I'm saying every minute, I'm working there. And after uh, three days ago, the, there is a new rule in my company uh, that may uh, uh, that uh, that might not suitable for me to continue there. So th that depends. So whatever company you are working with and whatever clients they have, and that will change everything. So sometimes it could be a giant leap for your career, your money also. And if you turn it from academia to uh, um, company, yeah, money also, money matters, right? So people can say in the uh, first meeting, but the main item is that also for uh, to, to go through every uh, steps. Okay. So uh, you have to identify and like, what is your problem with uh, to go or for the transition? You need motivation. Can you think like that man hold that elephant? No, right? But just he is just guiding. He is just guiding his leg there, and he's, <laughs> that uh, elephant is going there. So, so even that is a big. If your problem is even big, so if you get some motivation or like emotional support from colleagues, friends, family, or feedback, what is your uh, what you have to, what you need to improve everything, like uh, whatever environment you are working with. And, and like, yeah, yes, I said like collaborator or intellectual community, whatever community with you are working with, and that helps to uh, move forward. So you have to identify your, identify your choice and you have to, if you, uh, in, in a meeting or in any conference, or if somebody asks question, I would say that to make question also, you have to know something, right? So you have to go through your problem. I hope it, uh, I attended a lot of conferences. And uh, if somebody asks, because to ask also, you have to know something. That means you define your problem. You define what you don't know. That is half solution, I would say. Because why they are asking, I, I would think like this. Why, why they are asking question? Because they knew their problem and they want their solution. If you have something there, you have, if you have some ideas on that, whatever idea you are working with, and they, they, uh, they can use to solve their problem. So you have to identify. And so you have to pinpoint the, your uh, priority. I am referring to this very famous picture uh, during Olympic. Have you heard this name, Yusuf Bike? He is not gold medalist. He is silver medalist. Second, who is fast? Nobody cares because everybody, everybody, everybody loves his style. So people say, "Oh, 
success is not in your hand success is in your pocket also <laughs> see right not only hand sometimes your success could be in your pocket also one hand in pocket no any additional devices using uh, he got silver medal very popular determination sharp uh, you have to sharpen the skill and growth mindset and embrace challenges if you face challenge if you see challenges that is actually motivation if you choose challenge are your motivation that is that means you are in the root of success so this guy every <laughs> internet sensation and very popular nobody care about who who won the medal uh, gold medal even even like bronze medal also he may be like popular like this so you have to pinpoint or you have to sharpen your skill and style style also how you talk <laughs> right that also helps <laughs> so after uh, actually this is a team of like two players there um, but I, I refer his name like Yusuf Dikek, silver medalist. Everybody know uh, during this period, I don't know right now, like 2024 Olympic shooting, uh, pistol shooting a game in Paris. And after, uh, before this, uh, uh, during this preparation, I look for who won the gold medal. <laughs> the last name is always same. Kick and Dikek. <laughs> almost same. Now I, I look for because because I didn't I didn't know like Jamie. I know him because of this. <laughs> I, I I know this second this uh, Damir uh, because of Yusuf. So so um, even you are not in the front line, your style bring in the front line, sometime. Okay. Similarly, uh, this is another picture from the uh, Olympic game. Like, look over the situation, how it's going around you. So identify and set your goal. Turn back, but never run back. <laughs> right? This is how you so, and, and Her name is Sakari, my pronunciation, correct? Sakari Richardson. Uh, she's looking are upon it. So I would say like turn back, but don't stop run, uh, running. Identify your goal because yeah, if you want to win and you can see your environment and it is the, it is the famous, it is called Sakari stair. So, um, so for this all, uh, to expand your horizon or to transit from uh, one set of job environment to other, what you need must is actually the network. The takeaway of this talk, I would say, is network. You have to know, uh, you have to know who is your like like a client, <laughs> customer, like that. You can think like that. So you have to prepare for that. For my case, for my case, yeah, network. I convene a lot of sessions in scientific uh, workshop, uh, scientific mis, uh, meetings, like AGU meeting, uh, European EGU meeting. I attended, I convened. Even I go, like, last year uh, in EGU meeting, I traveled there uh, as a convener, I presented. Most of the people already already knew me in the, my field. No, not all the attendees. Like in, in the, and oh, you are so weak. Yeah, how how you know? And oh, I I meet there. You you conduct you are conducting uh, meeting there. So I would say like you have to uh, whatever you are doing, your in environment should know. That is, that, that is the main point. Like, whatever research you are doing, so you have some, or like a conference, or so, if you go somewhere, these people should know you are doing that. At least, even they don't care, 
and you can call them and if you're presenting some like a paper or a poster, you should tell about that. That helps a lot. Whatever, even in postdoc, maybe my um, experience may not help you, but in my case, wherever I apply, I didn't get job. The job I'm working here and before, they invite me. But I work like in the post, in the in the postdoc position. I apply uh, many places, but I didn't get offer. But here I presented in one meeting, and and professor was there, and and he said, "What are you doing now?" And I I just graduate and uh, looking for a job. Oh, you can come if you want. I started here also same like in in Orion. I was looking for, in, uh, you have to check spam folder also sometime. One group invited me for the interview and after 15, 20 days, I saw email in the spam folder. If you are looking for a job that time, because it, this is a different type of name, I don't know why that goes into like spam folder. So you have to check that also. That is my experience. But a very nice group, they invited for me. Like uh, interview, I saw after one month in the, spam folder because why why i check spam folder after one month because i'm looking for job is that awesome there is spam folder also some <laughs> so uh, network is the main uh, key point for this um yeah thank you uh so uh hi so it so um Based on the information I know, uh, it could be wrong, but I think Orion space have really strict restriction on uh, citizenship uh, and green card holder or something. Could you uh, like briefly introduce as a green card holder, how does it feel to work on a company like that? And is it still open for green card holder to uh, apply for that job or is it only citizenship? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. So just I said like uh, three days ago, there is the rule change for, for the researcher there. A very small group, science group, and they fo focus on the uh, research. Uh, they get funding from different agency like NSF, uh, uh, AFRL, different type of, you can apply even you are not citizen in a certain, like when I was postdoc, I tried to uh, submit proposal in agency, they didn't allow because only a research professor can apply. But here I, I'm in research scientist position, I can apply. So I get, if I get fun, funding and I can start my work, even I can hire, but I already told you like, uh, there are a lot of restrictions. I cannot even enter in certain rooms, right? So because, so it is, so only few projects that entertain with international student, uh, 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 if they they don't have citizenship, so I'm in th that category. So recently they informed me that like if I get funding from agency, like I hope I'll get, but I cannot continue that type of research there. Their rule is that you know why? Because company always think about benefits. So if you do, you need to pay for the do you need to pay fee for to apply NSF. No, right? You just apply in NASA. You can just apply and if they accept and you can get funding and you can start a research. But what they change the rule is that like, if they, any agency don't take fee that, and you get a funding from that, you cannot start or you can continue, cannot continue that type of research there. That's the new rule, it's strange. So I also have to look for new position new place. So if I, I'm citizen, I can, because they are working a lot of like, how to track, how to track supersonic uh, aeroplane within certain periphery using INS radar. They have that type of uh, um, research they are working on. I can help with my expertise, but I cannot help because of my status. Yep. 
Hey, uh, yeah, I was curious to learn a little bit more about the mission of or the goals of Orient Space Solutions. So I understood from your presentation that it's it, you're mainly ba uh, design and manufacture small satellites. So what are the different purposes these satellites are used for and what um, is your research in that company more focused on? how to build these? I think I didn't really understand that. Or yeah, is it also, are there also any of these satellites used for research itself? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, they build satellite. They have own satellite also. Sometimes they broadcast, they are in how it is launching there. <laughs> it's so exciting there, I like that. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, they are on satellite and they, they build satellite for other. Few months ago, uh, director traveled to uh, Netherlands because a certain research group they want satellite and they are uh, they gonna be their client and there is a contract and they are making satellite for other. So it's also research. Yeah, 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 research, yeah. yeah. Not, yeah. Is and, it mainly and, research satellites or also telecommunication or other? They have satellite? their own research satellite. Maybe uh, other agency, private agency, like I said in Netherlands, maybe that is commercial, but not sure. But I am 100% sure for research, but not 100% sure for like commercial thing. Maybe that is commercial. I don't know that. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're muted. Somebody have a look at the online. Um... <laughs> No, thank you. If there, yeah. Thanks for the uh, the talk. It was really interesting to hear your career path. I was wondering if you could touch on some of the things that you felt less prepared for in your transition from academia to um, industry. Yeah, actually, yes, I am less prepared for the industry. Thank you for the question. Like, I, I'm not well prepared for the industries, but I already told you like. It is like quasi transition, like not 100%, because it, there is also a research department. Maybe in most of, um, there will be that type of research part or science department in the company, but that has science group, similar to here. Science group, they only focus on the research, not the manufacturing thing. Uh, Maybe that is due to like the, the director who established the company. He has also physics background, <laughs> similar type of area, like uh, ionospheric and uh, the data simulation, that type of thing. Jeff Crowley, that may be the reason. So there is still a certain uh, department. But when that, uh, this, no, not that, <laughs> the Orion merged with like uh, Arfield company and they are changing rules and regulations every, like I said, I would say minute, maybe in the month, but that is for minute for me. Thank you for the quiz. Yeah, I guess to expand on that, like what were some of the skills that you had to develop after moving to this position at Orion? So you, you have to use to with uh, the, the thing I uh, mentioned, like uh, work environment, time, Right, you have uh, you have to make mindset that like you have less freedom. Like I I saw you uh, like in the Tonga volcano case, like there is TEC. I was working on that when I was postdoc because my area was different. Like I was working on the wind measurement when I was in postdoc. In the side part, I was working there is uh, like event like a Tonga event and that type of things. I was working. And I was making paper, research paper, but I cannot even get chance to see one time here because they, that I'm bound with their project. They have to report. They have to report what is the progress in every month or so. So you have to change a little bit like you have less freedom. So you have to spend time within that frame. Not only that, you have to show some results also. Because uh, the contract is you, uh, either you or the company uh, can hire or fire anytime. So you have to show the result also, like 
um, oh yeah, I can do this tomorrow or day after tomorrow in, in, in academia, right? I will ask somebody like, but you have to work one body, not somebody. You're on for that case. So you have to, uh, um, I think you, you can adjust with that. There, there won't be any issues. And uh, for the different type of skill, the skill uh, that in my case, the skill that I need is almost similar. And uh, the other environment you can adjust because there is money also. Thanks. Okay, another question for me. So to give us a little bit an idea of how, <laughs> how much multitasking you need to do, how many projects are you working on at the same time approximately? Uh, mainly uh, two to three projects, a two to three projects, but almost similar because science is same. That's almost so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 science is same. That is, that is one benefit for me. Like people say like, there is a, not like big transition, it is pseudo transition like. Um, environment different, but the research is almost similar. Uh, this is this is not happening in all cases. Yeah, right? the totally different. Like in the Pamela case, also this different environment. But the science case, the the, the theme is the same. Like the environment uh, changing. So to transit from one to other, you have to spend some time. And how long are the projects usually? Is it that you work? Yeah, the like projects, just a couple the of projects weeks. are from like NSF. I'm working with NSF, NASA, and AFRL. So, and it means how long in time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, from uh, uh, one year to three years, that type of project usually uh, uh, fund, like you get maximum five years in NASA project. So, yeah. Similar, similar to academia, like a research center in the university. Yeah. I have a question regarding doing research at the company. So the goal of company is to make profit. I'm wondering, so if the research at the company is always like product oriented, your goal is to deliver product to make profit. I'm just curious how the research is structured at a company, private company. Yes, exactly, right. See, if you do some research and based on that, they're gonna make, uh, build instrument, new device, because you, you are, you are proposing different techniques, right? In the in, in research, you are developing like new ideas because without idea, you cannot uh, make a, a like a new, new product, right? Even the satellite that that were built like a 10 to 20 years ago and now totally different, right? Different type of technique, size, shrinking, performance increasing. So that all happening due to research and how you gonna use that. So if you think like that, research is essential for the uh, to development of uh, uh, different type of instrument, right? In even like I in the beginning, I also surprised like uh, people needs like for the discovery you need uh, invention, you are you need some imagination. In the beginning, I think like a bike, if you ride, only two wheels. If you leave, you cannot stand. But if you run, you start to pedal. And it can run like the, the first who developed that and uh, it is some imagination, right? If you leave to will and it can fall like, but if you write, it, you can use it. So imagination helps. But for the to develop instrument also, research is essential. Without research, you cannot build new items, new devices, and that even iPhone, different versions. They did some research, right? What people need, cause you have to press in the beginning. Now you have to touch, right? Camera, three camera, one camera, front camera, back camera. So that depends upon like what customer uh, demands, and you have to research for like the, that is also research, right? What customer wants? That is also one type of research. But to fulfill that demand, you have to do some research. Thank you, Dr. Grace. 
I'm uh, I'm just curious on some numbers. Like uh, as a research scientist, what's the percentage you rely on soft money, and uh, and what's the overhead looking like uh, at around space? Uh, just I said like there are uh, some restriction, right? Um, but if you uh, there are a lot of restrictions, not few restrictions uh, for the research also. So if you think you are like you have expertise in certain thing, you are not uh, no uh, you are actually citizen of certain region, but you I would think like you are global citizens. So you can collaborate like uh, even uh, the case I said like. Uh, if they don't charge fee and you cannot get, you cannot bring fund here. But what can we do? Like if, if there is collaboration, other people, other people uh, submitting proposal and you are involved there and that can help. So there is uh, like different loophole also. Am I correct, uh, answering your question correctly in this case? I was basically asking, are you 100% based funding or are you 100% soft money based? Um, like depending on the grants? Yes, for now, yes. Oh, okay. Like yes. for, and also for other research scientists, I assume. Yeah. Uh, as much, well as yeah. they're yeah. the research. That, yeah, that's why it is like similar to research center and universities. So, and the overhead is also similar. I yeah, assume. overhead also there, but mm, they need like a result right away. <laughs> So the product, like not only satellite, they build some type of radar technique, like uh, they put in like uh, sea and live in the ocean because there is less ground instrument in the ocean, right? There is no like probing techniques and they build that type of um, radar down there. If there is no more questions, let's thank two speakers again for their nice presentation today. Thank you. Thank you.